fight. Hello. Uh, I want to talk about the Minimax strategy, which is a concept uh, in game theory. And it can be described as follows. It says that your best move is the move that minimizes the maximum you can lose, Minimax. So that your best move is the move that minimizes the maximum you can lose. So your first priority in any decision, if you're following a Minimax strategy, is to reduce the impact of your worst case scenario. <laughs> Very quick, obvious example is in chess, the worst outcome is checkmate. So all of your play should be designed to rule that out. After that, your next concern is not to lose high value pieces without gaining some kind of equivalent or greater advantage. Oof. Just to be clear, this isn't what gamers talk about as min-maxing. That's the practice of amplifying in-game traits to the maximum while completely neglecting others. We're talking about prioritizing the move which removes your worst outcome. It minimizes the maximum you can lose. This strategy has been proven to be optimal in zero-sum games, like the duel between me and my brother you're watching now. Oh, nice one. Oh. Stay down this time. <laughs> <laughs> Game theorists von Neumann and Morgenstern prove that for zero-sum games, minimax play always leads to outcomes in which neither player could improve by switching their strategies. And if you don't know what that means, uh, a zero-sum game is a game with clear winners and losers. So generally, Removing the worst outcome is your first priority when you're playing a game of any kind. This being done, your next move will be to remove or minimize the next worst outcome, and so on. Let's look at some examples of how this strategy plays out in competitive computer games, and then we'll talk about how this might apply in life. Okay, so gaming examples. One term you might have heard if you play team-based shooters is don't die for free. You may be in a situation that's hopeless, but you should try to inflict as much of a cost on the enemy as possible to trade kills or at least to slow the opponent's tempo by forcing them to recover or play cautiously. In the duel you're watching now, my brother and I are testing each other and there's an intention to only commit to an attack when we are not likely to die, thereby losing our weapons and armor as well as a point. In duels especially, you can feel the zero-sum dynamic very strongly. Every point of damage, every positional advantage, every kill either accrues to myself or to my opponent. So defensive play becomes as important as offensive play. If you do die, you're going to want the opponent as weak as possible so that you can either finish them off or that they lose time recovering. Of course, it's better not to die at all. Back off from encounters you are likely to lose, harass the enemy and fade away. Defensive play means that you are less likely to lose everything and gift resources and points to the enemy. If you are in a safe position there is less you can lose and the enemy <laughs> must take greater risks to enforce that loss upon you. Another example of this is eco rounds in CS. This is essentially when a team elects to save money and they will very likely lose a round. They do this when cash is low in order to do a full buy in the following round and turn a losing streak into hopefully a winning streak. They'll probably lose the round, but the loss will not cost them that much because they didn't spend that much money on guns and equipment, and it may set them up in the following rounds. In games like Hunt Showdown or Battle Royales like Warzone, you can minimize your maximum loss by not dying in the open where your teammates can't help you or revive you, um, or your body can be burned or camped, or whatever the worst case scenario is in that game. So after taking significant damage in an extraction shooter, you'd be wise to head to the extraction point and minimize your losses for that game. If your team's chances of being wiped have gone up relative to the other teams, then your worst case outcome has become more likely. In Hunt Showdown, this might be when you've lost a health bar or two. So let's look at some examples from real life where the minimax strategy is perhaps even more compelling. Nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when managing your personal finances, minimax might be a good strategy. 
So we're looking to create a situation where the worst possible outcome for you later. is a loss that you can comfortably sustain. Uh, Charlie Munger, the famous investor, said that in his whole life, he probably never bet more than a few thousand dollars against the odds. He also said, it is remarkable how much long-term advantage people like us, him and Warren Buffett, have gotten by trying to be consistently not stupid instead of trying to be very intelligent. Oh. When it comes to health, we're not fully in control of what happens to our bodies or our minds, but we can make some decisions that make the worst outcomes less likely. We can exercise, not eat the worst kinds of food, not drink large amounts of alcohol or do drugs. When it comes to our work or studying, Instead of fulfilling our basic obligations of getting our work done or studying, we might gamble on a moonshot, watching videos about becoming a big time, successful CEO or pro gamer. Oh, there you are. I didn't, I didn't know where you were coming from either. How'd you get there? But a Minimax strategy tells us to close the door on the worst outcome first, to at least do the minimum that is required of us. And then with that taken care of, we're in a good position to build a solid foundation for bigger kinds of success that will compound over time and are less susceptible to shocks. And I suppose with knowledge and understanding too, we are better to correct for the most egregious gaps in our understanding, first of all, before we go for some esoteric knowledge. <laughs> I was trying to showboat. Uh, so perhaps like morality is a good place to start. If we don't understand why it's important to be decent to other people, we're more liable to go down a very bad road. Uh, so this is a more urgent kind of knowledge, I would say, than knowledge about how to get rich or some kind of very abstract uh, scientific knowledge, which is like really valuable. But um, if we lack the morality, then any value that we get from that knowledge could be seriously undermined by mistakes that we make. <laughs> oh, damn it. Well, that's well, good, well played. So, kind of knowledge that's not about impressing people or worldly success, but about living a successful life is a better kind of knowledge to, to get locked down. Let's look at some bigger picture examples, finally globally about how minimax thinking could help us so if we believe that ai poses an existential threat to human life then this is very clearly a worst case scenario that needs to be taken off the table with regulation and strict hardware controls uh, before we focus on some of the other lesser problems that we're facing so billions of dollars are being deployed in a race to develop super intelligent ai systems uh, this is a kind of maximal strategy being employed, which is very bad. Uh, we're exposing ourselves to the worst kind of risks, like that we'll be replaced by Terminator robots, for example, in search of the best possible outcome and just hoping that it all works out. We would be much wiser to pursue a minimax strategy and accept more modest positive impacts from AI while securing the future of humanity. Oh no, a dinosaur! <laughs> a rocket jumped into the... If you believe that the worst case scenario for, for a democracy is to become an authoritarian state, then be careful about risking everything with a vote for a candidate who has simplistic answers and who attacks institutions. If you believe that climate hell is one of the worst outcomes for humanity, then you might be willing to reduce your energy usage to limit the worst impacts of global heating. We can also think about inequality in this way. Societies should focus on improving outcomes for the least advantaged, rather than enriching those who are so rich that no amount of money could make any difference to their living standards. So to conclude, our cultures often promote the idea of the exceptional, of the perfect, of going all in on a dream. <laughs> In reality, this can often be a recipe for crashing out early. In all of these cases, winning and strong performance are less about going for broke and more about sensibly closing the door on what you find unacceptable. Think of it like a ship. 
There's no point having the finest sails if there's a hole in your hull. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh. Ah. <laughs>